Hello everyone and welcome back to my Warhammer 40k guides. I am Brady and today I will be doing a quick tutorial on how to play Warhammer 40k on Tabletop Simulator. This was requested by multiple viewers that mentioned that they couldn't figure out how to get Warhammer 40k onto Tabletop Simulator because the base game itself doesn't come with any Warhammer 40k stuff. In some of my other videos I mentioned that you can use this game to play 40k but never mentioned that you need to add mods to the game in order to do so. Now this may sound intimidating to some of you who have never modded a game before, but I can assure you that it's much easier than you think and I'll show you how to do it in this tutorial video. Also, all of the mods are free, so the only thing you actually have to pay for is the initial price of the game tabletop simulator. I'm going to start from the very beginning and show you how to get the game itself, how to install the mods, and also some tips and tricks like some of the controls and the hotkeys. So let's not waste any more time and let's begin the tutorial. So let's start on your computer screen. This is my computer screen. First thing you have to do is go on Steam. Now that I have Steam open, we're going to find the game. So say you don't own the game. You're going to want to go to the store on your Steam page, and then you're going to want to search Tabletop Simulator. The Tabletop Simulator is going to pop up. It's this game right here. For me, it's $21 Canadian, or well, technically $22, and I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, it's a fun game and as you can probably see in a minute, you'll see how many hours I have on this game. So anyways, once you purchase your game, you need to then go to your library and go to your games. Then you have to find Tabletop Simulator in your list of a bunch of games. And then right here, after you select Tabletop Simulator, you're going to want to click install. For me it says play because I already have it installed, but right here it should say install for you after you purchase the game. And as you can see, I have 375 hours on this game. Over 300 of those are just for playing Warhammer 40k, so I do use this program a, a fair amount. So now, uh, after you would have it installed, you're going to want to click play. And then play again. Now that you got the game open, you can either join someone's game or create your own. So for you, wanting to be able to play and create uh, with Warhammer stuff, you're going to want to create your own game. If you're just building a list for yourself and getting ready to play with other people later, you can do that in single player with the method I'm about to show you, or you can just start a multiplayer game and get everything ready in there for when your friend arrives online or whatever it is that you're doing. So let's go on to that. So let's do a multiplayer just to show you how to set up a game so you could get in with a friend or a random person. And I'll also show you how to meet random people to play online uh, Warhammer 40k on this game. So you're going to want a server name for me, I always use APG. For the password, I'm going to put tutorial just for this, uh, for the sake of this video. And you always want a password on your uh, server. And the reason being is because you don't want random people joining your game and flipping over tables or models or just messing up your game in general. You don't want that happening. So put a password on it and even if you meet a random person online to play with, just personal message them the password so that way they can get into the game but no one else can. And so that's pretty much it. You can decide how many players you want. And I'm going to create the server. So now, here you probably see a bunch of stuff right here. Just ignore this for now because you're not going to have any of this on your game yet. Yours is just going to have this stuff up at the top and these four options. So if you have nothing Warhammer related, you haven't done anything yet, you're going to want to click on Workshop. Then for you, this is going to be empty. For me, I have tons of stuff in my Workshop because I've used this game a lot and I've already downloaded a bunch of stuff. But for you, this should be empty if you haven't done anything with this game yet. Then you're going to want to click Browse up here, this big blue button. Once you click Browse, it will bring you to the Tabletop Simulator Workshop. So now that you're in this workshop for Tabletop Simulator, you can now search anything you want for Tabletop Simulator. So I'm going to put in Warhammer 40k and be very generic. And you can see I have a bunch of stuff pop up that's Warhammer 40k related. There's an Eldar army, there's call there's a bunch of stuff but if you want to be more precise and more specific you can do something like this and go blood angels boom now i have a bunch of blood angels armies that i can pick from and if you want to actually look what's in it you would click on it and get a little bit closer sometimes there's multiple pictures it shows you all the things that this workshop has to offer so this one looks really good so let's go with this one so i'm going to want so right now, it was already downloaded, but I undownloaded it. Now, you're going to want to click on this blue, or blue, green plus sign. It's right here in the bottom right corner of the uh, workshop you want to download. So I'm going to download that one. So now this is part of my, work, uh, part of my workshop in Tabletop Simulator. 
And all of these downloads here are all completely free, by the way. So the only purchase you'll have to make is the initial purchase for the game itself. All of these workshop mods are all free. So I just got a Blood Angels army, and I already have this one owned too, but this just comes with more stuff. And then as you see, there's no Sanguinary Guard here, so you can download some Sanguinary Guard to go with them. You can download a, a Dwarf Engineer for some reason that has a cool gun on him, and whatever you want. All this stuff comes with it. So you're going to want all that. So now that you have that, I'm going to show you how to actually get that in-game. So now that we're in our workshop, we're going to find where we downloaded that at. And for me, it's in Warhammer Armies. Because I like to organize my stuff, I created folders like this and just create. And you can uh, put stuff in different folders. Like So for me, I got board games over here. I got my Warhammer Armies over here. Then I have Warhammer maps over here. So that way they're all nice and organized and I know where to find them. Instead of just having a bunch of stuff in one area and I gotta sort through it all and read everything every time. So this is what we just downloaded. So I am going to now open that one up just by clicking on it and clicking load. So everything's downloaded now, we got it all here. And so what that does when you load in a workshop like that, it loads in a brand new instance. When I say instance, I mean like a whole game. It gets rid of anything you were doing. So if you had a board ready and all that stuff, once you load this new workshop, it gets rid of everything that you already had. And this is probably one of the problems people are having trying to get their models on the board. So here's the way you actually go about making your army. You find a big empty space on whatever army board that you're working with. So for right now, we're gonna work with this right here. So we need an army. So let's say our army is going to have a bunch of scouts with shotguns. I don't even know if that's an actual option, but hey, we have two units of five scouts with shotguns. And I did that by copy and pasting, which is control C and control V. And then we want a, sure, we're going to take a venerable dreadnought with whatever loadout that is. Then we're going to take a predator and put that over here. Then we're going to take a storm raven and put that right here. Uh, put that back a little bit. Uh, and then we're gonna add a chapter master. There we go. We got our nice little army right here, right? Let's throw a land speeder in there too. So now this is the army that you want to play with. So you're gonna click and drag. I'm gonna actually keep the Storm Raven out because it's huge and gonna get in the way. But you click and drag like it's an RTS game like Starcraft or Command and Conquer or any type, any of those types of games. And you'll select everything. You see it all highlighted in yellow now? That means it's all selected. So now you want to take your mouse and hover over anything that you have selected, right click on it and go to save object. Then you're going to want to name it something that you're going to remember. So for this, I'm going to name it Blood Angels Tutorial. Save. So now that we have that saved, we want to actually get a board that we can play on, right? So we're going to want to go to games. We're going to want to lo load in another workshop, one that has a board. So I already have one downloaded, which is in my Warhammer maps, and this is the one I recommend. It's called Warhammer 40k 6 by 4 72 inches by 48 inches modular table. And again, if you want to find that, all you would do is click on browse right here while you're in the workshop part of this game. It'll bring you to the tabletop simulator workshop. Then you just type in the title of what I just had, Warhammer 40k 6 by 4 I'll just put in that and it should find it. And I believe it's this one right here that I already have downloaded. See how it has the blue check mark? That means it's already downloaded. So this is the one you want to go with. I highly recommend this one and I'll show you why in just a moment. So now I've showed you how to download the army, how to get your army saved so you can bring it into the map and how to download the map. So now we're going to load the map and I'll see you when the map gets loaded. All right, so everything's loaded. And to you watching the video, it'll seem like an instant because I'm just going to transition it and editing so you don't have to sit there for loading. But the loading actually took about 30 to 40 seconds. And for you, depending on what kind of a computer you have, it might take up to a minute to two minutes to load everything. I have a very good computer, so it, it downloads everything insanely fast. But for you, it might be a little bit slower. But even then, once everything gets loaded, you should be good to go. So anyways, we had a little problem here. Uh, sometimes this will happen when you do load something. One of the entities won't load properly. So you can try to force it by clicking this import, but most of the time it still fails. So the easy way to get out of this and to not worry about this is to just exit it out. So now one of these entities isn't going to load. And I couldn't tell you, to be honest, which one didn't load properly, and it doesn't matter. As long as the board's loaded, as long as the terrain loaded, then you should be good to go to play the game. 
This is why I recommend this map. It's because it comes with all of the deployment types. So this green line is Dawn of War. Uh, the red line is hammer and anvil. These white lines are secure and control, the two corners. Purple line is spearhead assault. You get the point. It has all of the different deployments you could possibly need right here. Now you're asking, how do I actually get my army into here? If you tried to go to games and go to workshop and load in that full Blood Angels list you downloaded from the workshop, it would replace the instance, which again means it will delete all these tables, it'll delete this game and bring in the new game, which is the Blood Angels army. We don't want to do that, which is why we saved our stuff to our chest. So we're going to go to objects, saved objects, and we're going to find Blood Angels tutorial, which is, I believe, this one right here. So we're going to load in the stuff that we just saved. Boom! We have our army inside this game ready to play. So you would just select all your stuff, drag it over here, and then you and your opponent would start, after they bring in their army, you start setting up all your stuff, all the terrain, everything you want. So here's, now that we've got to this point, I'll give you a couple of tips of what to do, or what you can do in-game. So I recommend loading in your army first before you set up the board, because this is what's going to happen. And then you'd have to select all your stuff and it'd be all like it's not as easy as if you just loaded it in while there was nothing here at all so with that in mind let's move all this let's just get this out of the way then we're gonna throw this right here we're gonna throw this oops oh, so now this happens if you flip your stuff upside down just hover over it and press F and it'll flip back up also if you want to rotate something you hold it and you spin the mouse wheel so anyways, let's set up this terrain. Oopsies. I'm going to set up this terrain. Physics is a thing in this game too because of dice rolling. Like I'll show you real quick. You can grab some dice and you literally roll dice. Just like real life. See, I got a three, six, and a five. Or you could roll them in here if you really want. It's up to you and your opponent how you want to do it. So anyways, let's move some terrain. Put some terrain on the board. Let's go like this. Let's throw a wall. Uh, let's put that right there. Okay, so this looks like a decent board. I would normally put more work into it, but I'm just trying to be quick here. So one problem you're going to notice is if you are rolling dice, you might move the terrain a little bit. If you roll the dice too hard, it's going to knock stuff over, and you don't want that happening. Another thing that could happen is if you have a bunch of dice like right here, you don't want to accidentally select the dice and the building and grab them all and mess stuff up. So there's an easy way around that. Get rid of this. Put this right here. Gonna after you're done with the board and you're cool with the terrain the way it is, you select everything, you right click, you go to toggles, then lock. Now all of these buildings are not selectable and no matter how hard you throw something at it, it will not move. So that's how you want to set up all your terrain and objectives. So if you're playing with objectives too, you would just put it down then right click, toggle, lock. Now that objective is not moving for anything. So there'll never be any bumping of terrain, there'll never be any bumping of objectives, everything will be where it's supposed to be. Then as for actually playing the game, let's say you're done deployment and it was Dawn of War. We're just going to put this thing right here. You obviously don't want to play the game with all of this paint and stuff all over the board. So you're going to want to go over to Pixel Paint, which is one of the options here. There's a bunch of different things you can do over here. Uh, so you go to Pixel Paint and you're going to want to erase entire pixel drawing. Boom, that deleted all the lines. Now you have a clean board ready to play a game of Warhammer 40K. So with that said, there's a couple other things to teach you. First thing is to make measurements, you go to this line tool over here. So you click on the line tool and make sure too, because it's different and I'll show you. Sometimes measuring is weird on here. How I like to measure is I look from the top down and measure like this, because that's probably the most efficient way to do it. Because if you measure like this, you're looking like this and then you try to measure we switch the angle that might actually have only been to like right here you know what I mean like I might have been measuring wrong so how I like to do it is I like to aim and look directly down and then measure like this that's the easiest way you get the most accurate measurement another way to do it which is a very good and accurate way is once you're using the grab tool you grab whatever it is you want then you hold tab and now you can measure as you're moving so you perfectly no that's good enough 11.9 inches there we go i didn't cheat i got it up as far as i wanted so again if you want to measure while moving you left click and hold whatever it is you want to measure then you hold tap and that brings up the measuring stick and you can measure in whatever direction you want to move your thing 
there's a bunch of other cool things you can do here. Nothing you're really going to use. I like using the flick when I get pissed off. Then you can just flick stuff, even though it's not working. Maybe it's too heavy. Let's flick one of these little guys. Oh, there we go. So yeah, that's basically it. That's how you would get the mods onto Tabletop Simulator in order to play the game. Now here's a couple of other tips that you might want to know. So before you buy the game, say if you play a really weird army that not a lot of people play. Tabletop Simulator might not have a mod of that army, but you can always proxy something else in to work as it. And if sizes are different, you can hold, if you look at this predator, you can hold the plus or minuses to make it grow or bigger. So look, now I got a land raider if I really wanted to. I could shrink it down, now I got one of the little gun emplacement things that have two heavy bolters on it. So you can, you can make do with things like that. So say if you want to use a Daredeu Dreadnought, and they don't have that on here. You can just grab a regular Dreadnought and increase its size. Oops, I accidentally deleted it. But yeah, you would just increase its size and do, use it as it counts as. There's a couple of times, especially in the early days of Tabletop Simulator, where not every army was on here, and I had to proxy a lot of stuff. But for the most part, the game actually has a lot of different armies. If you look here, I have Eldar, I have Dark Eldar, I have Orcs, I have more Dark Eldar because it has a couple models that the other one doesn't. I have Tau, I have regular Space Marines, I have, or no, Space Wolves, I have Ultramarines, I have Imperial Guard, there's so much stuff that you can play with. And of course, you can always proxy and do what you need to to play the other armies. There's actually a lot more. I know they've updated and like Harlequins are on here now, uh, Blood Angels, there's tons of stuff. Uh, so yeah, I still recommend this game. I recommend buying it. If you needed help getting into the game and actually playing Warhammer 40k, that is how you do it. And the last thing I'm going to show you really quick, let me get back. So the last thing I'm going to show you is I said you can play with random people online. I'll show you how to do that. So you're going to want to go to this chat over here. You're going to want to type. You just say something like, hey, does anyone want to play Warhammer 40k? And I would normally hit enter, but I don't want someone responding because I, I don't want to actually play a game of 40k right now. I'm just showing you guys how you would do it. And every time I've done it this way, I've found someone random to play against within 5 to 10 minutes. I've never waited longer than 10 minutes to find someone that wanted to play a game. So anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry it wasn't like a quote unquote real Warhammer guide video today. But because of how many requests I had on how to actually play Warhammer 40k on Tabletop Simulator, I figured I would take the time to make this video to uh, help you guys out. So with all that taken care of, I want to let you guys know I have some good things coming for this channel and I'll have an update video talking more about that either tonight or tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. Also just in case you guys didn't know, the channel now has a Patreon. So if you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so there by becoming a patron, or you can always just share my videos with your friends or on any social media that you may use. I always appreciate help that comes in any form. Well anyways, that about covers everything for this video, so I'll leave it at that. I hope I was able to help you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy Wargaming.